Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Hello and welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by Big League Chew. This is episode 328. I am your new host, Nate Reyes. Kyle Corwin is dead. Through and through. Heart, soul, mind. Kyle is done. I don't know who I'm looking at in the camera right now. I don't know who's looking back at me. But it is a shell of what I used to see as Kyle Corwin. So introduce yourself, bud. Hey, my name's Kyle, um, former Red Sox fan. Hi, Kyle. Um, and I have I have a sickness, and that is watching Xander Bogarts highlights the morning after he gets <laughs> picked up by the Padres on an eleven year, two hundred seventy five million dollar deal. Ugh. No, look, um, Nate wanted to take the intro. And this is the first time in 320 something episodes that Nate has done so to my memory. And I, and I said, there's no better time than to hand over the reins, Uh, like Xander Bogarts getting, (laughs) getting shipped out. Basically that that's the right time to do it. Uh, no, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I'm like, this isn't a bit, you can ask Nate. The, this guy was there. He was he was standing next to me in Fenway Park for the 2021 AL wildcard game. And he can tell you how passionate, how how much more passionate I was when Xander had that first inning home run off Garrett Cole, as opposed mm-hmm. to really any other event that took place that night. He knows yeah. this is my guy. So what you're going to hear today, we got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about Aaron Judge. We got to talk about Bogarts. We got to talk about Wilson Contreras, Josh Bell, a whole list of guys. That's why we're here now. Yeah. Didn't even mention that. We're usually one a week in the off season, but a mm-hmm. lot has happened in the last 48 to 72 hours, however long it's been since our last episode on Monday. Uh, and we just figured we need to, we just had to do this. And and I texted Nate this morning. And I said, how's your day looking? And he texted me back immediately, said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? So we knew. So it was just meant that we were here for this episode. Uh, one, for me to vent. Two, uh, to talk about this massive Aaron Judge deal, uh, the big, the biggest free agent coming off the board. And then, like I mentioned, talking about all these other names. Uh, but as I mentioned, or as I was trying to explain, there's... This isn't a bit what you're going to hear from me today. Like I'm, I'm genuinely hurting. I was, I, I don't want to go as far as to say that I was, I was feeling sick last night, but my stomach, my stomach was turning and I didn't get very much sleep. So I'm going to just try to keep it as real as I can with you guys. I'm going to try to be transparent here. If you guys have questions for, for either of us, hit us up in the DMS. This, this is a, or this voicemail is a, or, or it's voicemail. Still voicemail working. We're, we're still doing the voicemail number numbers in the, uh, in the in the bio mm-hmm. but call and yeah. rant if you want to yell at red sox organization front office people you, you this is the place to come yeah so we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it as real as we can with you guys here um but to open us up here let's not jump right into it let's let's talk aaron judge as i mentioned biggest free agent coming off the board this is this was uh, long anticipated, both by Yankees fans and I think baseball fans in general. I think the, the baseball world just wanted to see where this guy ended up. Uh, to the surprise of some, but maybe not to others, ends up back with the Yankees on a nine-year, $360 million deal, uh, which for those keeping track at home was almost $150 million more than what they offered him back in spring training. So, Nate, I'll, I'll give the floor to you. Tell me what you how you're feeling about this. I tried to tell everybody. No one no one really believed me. Like he he wanted to stay a Yankee. He wanted to stay a Yankee. Uh I think overall just just 
with what we talked about already, like you got to potentially hit the reset button on any type of legacy you want to leave or build. It seemed like it was kind of a sellout. If you specifically go to the Giants, I understand like the hometown, my favorite team growing up narrative, but like they're not ready. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not ready. Also, they're gonna- I, I, I read this today. I didn't realize he grew up a hundred miles from San Francisco. Yeah, I'm, I mean, here, like, I'm sitting here thinking he's like right around the corner, like he could no, he could yeah. throw a stone and hit Oracle Park, but he's a hundred miles away. I, That's what I'm saying. Like he he no. obviously he grew up a Giants fan, and you know, like he's been vocal about that. He's been open about it, and like that's cool. Like that's that's great. But again, like what are you going to do with the rest of your career? And understanding that like he got into the into the bigs late. Like he didn't, he didn't break in until 27. That's that's late in the game to most standards. So it's like, are are you going to rebuild your legacy in a different city, a bigger ballpark where obviously your athleticism is going to decline? You know what I'm saying? Like that, that stuff's going to go down as you get older. It's just, it's natural. So it's like, are, are you really going to end up getting what you hoped for just to say you played with your favorite team as a kid? just didn't make sense it didn't make sense the giants aren't there they're 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 probably gonna battle for a third place spot i feel like the diamondbacks are in a better position than the giants so it just it it really didn't make sense it didn't seem to make sense for me outside of of the that that narrative um i'll be honest with you though i i my heart sank when i saw the ridiculous Heyman tweet come out and in my mind like I didn't even I'm just letting you know I didn't even read Arson Judge I just saw Aaron Judge Giants like in my that's all I read my brain went right to those words and what sucks is I was in the middle of a call like for work so I was talking to you know like a family about college football scouting and stuff like that and I'm like uh, <laughs> it was a, like a moment of, uh, um, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> like I was, I, I had to keep going with the meeting, so I couldn't really react, but or you could have just pulled a Kevin in the office. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, just immediately. Just, just drop. I gotta go. This is over. Your kid's not good enough. I'm out. Um, yeah. So side note, I mean, John Heyman's such a bum, dude. Like, is it is it that important to you to be the first on the scene where you, one, don't even know how to type out, two, it like, wasn't even his. It wasn't even his only mistake. He he was talking about for some reason he was talking about Cole Hamels and he said. Uh, pitcher who hasn't pitched uh, since like 2019, Coke Hamels. His name yeah, is Cole. Dude. Like, and and then didn't just, Nightingale? I know you put that post out on Facebook with Nightingale talking about Judge for like the first part of a tweet, and then he said Stanton at the end of the tweet. Yeah, he said he said the the hashtag Yankees believed Tuesday afternoon that their offer was similar to the hashtag SF Giants, but still didn't know yet which direction Stanton would go. <laughs> and then there's people in the con- in the replies being like, if the Giants want to take on Stanton's contract, be more than like, glad to hand them over. <laughs> Does anyone understand what's going on? And look, uh, I, I've yeah. said it for the longest time. The reporter culture, like that that media mm-hmm. culture, is so bizarre to me. Yeah how how they're so quick to get and, and I get it. That's how they make a living. That's how mm-hmm. that's how Jeff Passan builds his his credibility. That's how he builds his brand. Is he sure. be, he he becomes known as the guy, and he's the he's the first. He's more often not the mo- the most accurate. He rarely walks back anything, if ever. And so I get that. That's what these guys are trying to do. But it's just it's I don't want to say cringy, but it's it's bizarre how how goofy these guys can be where yeah. they're like first 
I want to I want to congratulate my colleague so and so on being first with this report. More details to follow. And they're 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 so cutthroat it seems like yeah. when they're trying they're to get to these reports. Almost. Yeah, and then and then after the fact, once the dust settles, once the once the winter meetings are over, it's like, well, I just want to congratulate my colleagues on such a on such an incredible last right. few days. Get yeah. some sleep, fellas. It's like, what? Dude, it's, shut up. Shut yeah. up. Stop. John Heyman is just it's he's he just seems like an ass. He's always seemed like an ass. I've never seen that guy smile on TV. He's just like this old grumpy man that like it. it I don't know. He thinks he's better than everybody else. It's just he, he seems pompous. So I'm glad this happened to him. I'm glad he he dug himself this hole. And and like, how do you even trust what that guy is? It, once you make that mistake, it's hard to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like once you do that a couple times, and I understand, look, this is a tough job. You're like all over the place. You're probably getting blown up on your phone constantly by sources and connections. And you're probably working on like three hours of sleep during these winter meetings. I understand. But be better. This is your one job. Be better. So I don't trust you anymore. I don't. I, I not only don't like you. I just I don't trust you. So you're out. Bye bye. Back to Judge, my guy, my dude. I told you he wanted to be a Yankee. He wanted to build on this legacy that he's already started to build, and he's. I was listening to a little bit of like Ryan Rucco's take, and he's like the. Just on popularity alone. This guy's going to go down as top 10, possibly top 5, most popular Yankee of all time. Like, this is this generation's Derek Jeter. And I think, you know, there's legendary names. Even the record he broke with Roger Maris, like, that's not really that in that tier. You know, it's a Yankee legend, but not quite that tier as far as popularity goes. I mean, you're basically talking about, you know, Babe, Mickey, Joe D, Jeter. You know what I'm saying? Judge is now starting to build towards that. And if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's great with with the media. He's great with teammates. He's great with the fans. Like He knows what to say at all times. The guy's just like he's he's built for this. It just it made sense for him to stay. So on top of that, I was talking noise on how Steinbrenner before. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I'm I'm actually kind of glad that Cashman didn't lock this down. Cause I'm not ready to like accept him right now. Like I, I'm just I'm not happy about him right now. I like that Hal was just like, what would dad do? I feel like that's what he had, like this inner question of like, what would dad do? Homie's in Italy. In Italy. I don't even know what time it is over there when he's locking it down. But he calls up Judge. He's the one that does it. What do you want? Do you want to be a Yankee? Yes, sir, I do. I just need a ninth year. Let's go. Let's go. You want 40 mil a year? Fine, we're already there at the eight years. They're at eight and 320, right? You want another year? Let's do it. And another thing that Ruko was saying, which I kind of appreciated, was like, yes, you're not going to get the production that you're getting now. Like, eventually that production is going to go down. Overall, I think most of these contracts, like, they're ending up not really worth it pretty much every time. As long as you get some rings mixed in, it makes you forget about the price. This won't be worth it. When, we're, when he's 38, 39, 40 years old, you're, the, the same conversation like every other player is going to be like, okay, it's time for him to move on. Hopefully he retires soon, blah, blah, blah. But the Yankees are going to continue to build because the Yankees now have, have his legacy. The same way they had Jeter's, the same way they had Moe's, the whole core four. When you're watching the end of a career and you, and you see these milestones starting to come up, just like we did for pool holes, right? It's like, okay, now I want to see this guy go out, you know, riding off into the sunset. And he's doing it as a Yankee. And I think as, as much as people hate the Yankees, 
as much as people feel like this this deal is boring, doesn't shake things up the way they're hoping, I, I think this is the way it was supposed to happen. And job well done on the entire judge's camp. Everybody involved with this whole situation couldn't have done, a, this was textbook, couldn't have done a better job. So here are my thoughts. As we were talking about before we hopped on, I, for one, and not even as a Red Sox fan, but baseball fans generally should be happy about this. Because we've said it before, I'll say it again, baseball is a better product when the Yankees are the Act evil like the empire that they that they exactly. once were known as and you can only do that in this, at this moment in time by bringing Aaron Judge back right if Aaron Judge walks who like who are you mm-hmm. you have no identity another thing for me i'm glad he stayed away from boston i know there was rumors about them being in the mix which we'll get <laughs> we'll get into how. i don't know i don't know I what don't mix see how. they must have been in in some sort of cake mix or making brownies or something cuz it surely wasn't the Aaron Judge mix i know that much Mm-mm. i'm i'm glad for Aaron Judge that he he was able to bet on himself and get what did i say uh, like what was it 100 yeah, I think the more, original original offer more. was seven years, like two twenty, right? Yeah, like two fifteen or some somewhere in mm-hmm. there. Um, but I don't know. I I I'm happy for him in terms of the bag. I I, I am I am because I love seeing guys bet on themselves like that. Yeah, but I still the the question for me still remains. And I tweeted this out kind of like tongue in cheek, kind of just like whatever. But I, or I may have posted it in, in the the chalkboard uh, group chat, which, by the way, join the group chat on uh, yeah. chalkboard. Talking about his offseason moves. Um, link in the bio. Link in the bio. Um, is that he. <laughs> like. Do you value the money more than winning? Yeah. If you're Aaron Judge, and I say that, and I'm truly I'm removing the bias out of this. But if you're Aaron Judge, what about the Yankees leads you to believe that you stand a chance of winning anything? What have they shown you? What not even not beyond the time that you've been there? If you're Aaron Judge. Going back to their last World Series, what have they done to show you that they're capable of winning a World Series? They've mismanaged money. They haven't spent money. They've mismanaged uh, their front their front office, their their manager, whether or not he should even be in the spot that he's in right now. But they decided to bring him back. They decided to to bring back Cashman or extend Cashman. There's just been a lot of questionable moves. Both yeah, on the sure. field and in the front office, it just makes me wonder if you're Aaron Judge. Is uh, we yeah we can point back to to your original. We can look back at your original point where you said he cares about his legacy. Do we know that for certain though? Because like if you're Aaron Judge, you could have you could have cashed out somewhere else where I think maybe you stood a better chance at at winning. I don't think so. I don't think anyone was was willing to go there. And I understand like San Diego tried to swoop in at the last minute for the 10 and 400. And we'll get to the Padres here in a minute. But it, it seemed like what is going to make most sense for him on the inside? What is going to make what's going to make his heart feel good? You know what I mean? And it's like, are you ready to break all kinds of hearts? Giants hearts are, you know, Giants fans hearts are a little bit broken, but in reality, it's like they, it wasn't your guy to begin with. So it's not the same kind of heartbreak. It was just a hopeful possibility. 
He's not ready to break hearts. And and it's not like the it's not like uh, yes, I agree with you the the mishandling of a lot of stuff that the Yankees have done over the last few years, specifically since Judge has been in the league. More than a few, I will say. I hear you, but I'm I'm saying is that they're still they've still been on that brink. They're still a couple pieces away. But they've still been there. And I think that was also part of it is like, he's like, you know, I got unfinished business. I got something that I need to do. No, and I hear you. And I don't mean to cut you off, but it's it's more than just being on the brink for me. And again, I'm tr- I'm really trying to, to, to step out of my role here and look at this as objectively as I can. It just seems like there, and, and you've even said this to in so many words, it's like it's a a loser mentality almost if you're New York. Like they're getting in scuffles, they're getting in in involved in drama that's that they should be so far above. And they're they're making comments. They're they're falling back on excuses on on whether or not roofs are being opened. This yeah, and that. Sure. And it's just it it I don't want to say it screams New York Mets culture to me. They're not there yet. There's just something about their organizational, I don't know if it's philosophy or just overall mojo mm-hmm. that just lends me to it just leads me to believe that this isn't this isn't a win, winning organization right now. And I, I think tru- the, the I desire is that. there. The desire is there. And it's just like it, it until they understand until they win it. Until they win it and understand what winning it means. It's going to be difficult. And and I think that that's probably why I'm so over Aaron Boone is just because it's like he's he's never really been a winner. Not in my mind. He's never been a part of a of of a winning culture, a winning organization. Yes, he had his moment in the sun, you know, in the uh in the 03 ALCS, but like for the most part, he's not he, he's not experienced what the Yankee way is. Um and so it's weird to see him leading the charge. I just, uh, I, I think uh, I'd like to see that. I mean, they're right there. They are right there. You know, they're right there. Everyone knows they're right there. It takes a couple pieces. And, and I'm not going to say that they're where the Astros have been. That seems to be the biggest hurdle. But they're right there. And I know they're, they need to be not done. You know, they need to keep going. And that's also another thumbs up to the judge camp of saying, all right, I'll get this done in time to where we still have time to make other moves. There's still stuff that needs to be done. Absolutely stuff that still needs to be done. No, I I get what you're saying about being right there, but at a certain point, I just feel like being stagnant, like you can be on the brink all you want, but if you're stagnant simultaneously, how much, how much is that really worth celebrating? I don't know. That's just me. Um, any other thoughts on on the judge signing? Welcome back, homie. Let's go. Uh, let's shift gears here. As much as I don't want to. Xander Bogarts, 11-year, $275 million. I believe it was corrected la- late last night. I think it was reported that originally it was 280. I think they adjusted that to 275. Uh, deal with the Padres. Um, does not have any opt outs, includes no trade protection. So, in other words, Xander Bogarts has officially played his last game as a member of the Boston Red Sox. Safe to say. Yeah. He's not, uh, no, he's not coming back. Without a doubt, not coming back. Who are you trying to convince? Are you trying to wrap your mind around this? I'm. Are I'm, you trying yeah. to? I'm just trying. I'm, I need to say it. I need to say it out loud. Just get I need it to out. Say of your it system. out loud yeah. so I can I can kind of come to grips with this. I've been in such a, a strange headspace for the last thirteen hours. No, actually. I would say closer to like six months, but 13, sure. But especially the last 13 (laughs) hours, almost, almost to the minute. Um, I didn't know what to do when I woke up this morning. I just laid in bed. I was like, I I don't want to get up. Yeah. And then I remember that I had a free reward from Chick-fil-A, a a little breakfast reward. Mm. Not only did I not drive the speed limit, 
I didn't mm. drive over the speed limit. I drove under the speed limit. Oh, it was one of those. No was, music on. No music. It was one of those rides to oh, Chick-fil-A. Oh, boy. And then just wow. sat in the parking lot and ate my bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit like a loser because I didn't know I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to think. Hold on. Uh, real quick. Don't sleep on that grilled chicken with the egg white. A little breakfast sandwich uh, they've got. No, I'll pass Don't on the sleep egg white. on that. No, I'm telling you that slaps grilled chicken egg white pepper jack cheese whew, on a on the one of those english muffin things can we focus on my look pain? out on that look out on that all you 12 of those can we focus on my pain here yeah back to it do you have a sweet tea early in the morning or did you mix it coffee in no dude i had it dry i had that and the hash browns dry it, it i'm telling dry? you it's a raw it's a it's been a rough morning Oh, um, poor throat. Yeah, I was about ready to fall asleep last night. Uh, phone goes off. I see the notification. I was telling you this before we hopped on. I saw the notification pop up. I saw the red, the little red siren emoji pop up. Yeah. And it said, Xander Bogarts. And so I said, yes, it finally happened. Mm. And then I see... P A D R dot dot dot. And I said, no. Surely this is a Heyman typo. This is a a, a, a Heyman mistake. Maybe mm-hmm. Nightingale infiltrated the, the text alert notification system. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But it that wasn't to be. And we're now looking at Xander Bogart's heading to San Diego. Let me just say this. Hmm. I'm tired. I'm. I need to vent. I need to vent. I'm tired of hearing about the Padres committing to 11 years for a 30 year old shortstop. And I'm tired of he- hearing people say, well, thank goodness the Red Sox didn't match that. If you're the Boston Red Sox, you didn't need to match that. If you would have taken care of business back in spring training and gave him a respectable offer, you wouldn't have to match anything. In fact, you wouldn't even have to see him in free agency. You wouldn't have to see him entertaining offers from other teams. You wouldn't have to see him dealing with Scott Boris, trying to figure out where he's going to get his bag because he knew it wasn't going to be in Boston because they don't respect him. The answer that I'm looking for is why you why you spent a hundred what was it a hundred and five on Masataka Yoshida? It was a ninety million dollar contract, but you had to spend an extra fifteen. I think it was in some sort of international fee or something. Comes yeah. out to a hundred and five. That's more money than you offered Xander Bogarts in spring training. You offered him ninety million dollars in spring training. Xander Bogarts. And then you want to spend the whole you want to spend the whole year telling us that he is a priority and that you're working to bring him back. No, you're not. I'm more convinced now than ever that they they had no intention of bringing him back. And the fact that he left for he left for two seventy five and you didn't even meet him at two hundred million dollars. That's pathetic. That is absolutely pathetic. And I I was saying it to some guys last night. I have never hated this team more than I do right now. You can look at Mookie. You can you can play the tapes on how I responded when Mookie Betts left. I knew Mookie was gone. Everyone knew Mookie was gone. He was going for the bright lights of L.A. or some other big market. It wasn't going to be Boston. That was fine. Xander Bogarts made it clear on more than one occasion, more than probably a dozen occasions, that he wanted to stay in Boston and that he wanted to be a part of this organization that he came up with. He was even outspoken about not really wanting to play for anybody else, including the Yankees, because of how much he loved the Boston Red Sox and how much he appreciated them. And you turn around and spit in his face in spring training with a $90 million offer, which, again, I'll remind you, is less than what you just paid for a guy who has nothing to do with this organization prior to the day that you signed him. You're just going to sign him sight unseen. He has contributed nothing to the recent success of this organization. And you're just going to say, the doors are open. Come on in. And Xander, by the way, those doors are still open. Feel free to walk out because we have nothing for you 
to, we have nothing to offer for you. That is pathetic. And if that's how you're going to run your organization, and I said this last night to some guys that I was in the, the group chat with, at this point, and I, I'm, I'm being 100% honest here, I don't want Rafael Devers on this team after this year. And you can say, what a ridiculous take. You need to calm down and think about this. I don't want Rafael Devers on And you can, may, Nate, I'll give you the login to Photoshop. You can make the quote graphic. I don't want Rafael Devers on this team after next season when he hits free agency. If this is how you're going to handle treating your stars, if this is how you're going to handle treating your homegrown talent, I don't want to have to see Rafael Devers go through what Xander Bogarts just went through because he deserves better than that. You know why? Because he's a good baseball player, just like Xander Bogarts is and will continue to be for the Padres. Best of luck to you, Xander. But if that's what you're going to do to Rafael Devers, save save us the trouble. Save us the heartache. Don't try to don't spend the next year saying that you're going to make him a priority only to let him walk when you could have gotten him for much cheaper than what he will inevitably go for come free agency. I don't want Rafael Devers on this team if that's how you're going to treat your your homegrown stars. And if and if Rafael Devers walks, blow the whole thing up. Blow I'm I, I I've said time and time again the Red Sox are not a rebuilding team. They 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 shouldn't be. They're the Boston Red Sox. You have the money to spend, you have the talent in the farm to be competitive. But if this is what you're gonna do, the blow the whole thing up. Start from scratch, sell the team. I don't care. I don't care. This was the final straw for me. Like well, I said, like I said, Rafael Devers at this point, flip of the coin if he stays, if he goes, <laughs> whatever. But letting Xander walk. And to, yeah. and the fact that people are calling for Carlos Correa to be the pivot, if you're not going to spend on Xander Bogarts, who for all intents and, and purposes is a lesser of a shortstop on paper than Carlos Correa, what makes you think that they're going to go after Carlos Correa? And if for some reason that they hit the panic button and decide to sign Carlos Correa, I may not watch a, a game this season. And I'm not even joking. Zan, Carlos Correa is probably at the top of my no watch list in terms of guys mm-hmm. that just absolutely turn me off to the game of baseball. Mm-hmm. Carlos Correa is, is at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. So if that's going to be the guy that we're going to, I've seen so many Red Sox fans say, well, this was tough. You know, we let Xander go, but the next move has to be extend, extend Rafi and sign Carlos Correa. And now we go. I said, that's, that's how you're going to, how you're going to console yourself. That's how you're. That's the compromise, is to let your your the the face of your franchise, the would have been captain of your team, you're gonna let him walk, and then you're gonna pivot to one of the most disliked players in baseball. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm I've had it, dude. I'm 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 done with this team. I I can't right now. Well, I think I I think just to provide even more support to your argument is that it's attached with a lot of like questionable stuff that they did last season. Like a lot of weird stuff. You know what I'm saying? You can even go back further with like the Trevor Story signing to where you already saw that like if you bring in a shortstop, yes, he's open to playing second base, but this does seem like a safety net to losing Xander. Now that like this season has happened and there's like some injury stuff and, and, you know, probably not going to happen, but that's how it was perceived in the beginning when that move happened. Am I right? Like it was like, oh, you're, you're preparing to leave him. You're preparing to transition away from Xander. So that's one questionable move leading into the season, kind of coming through towards the trade deadline, just strange things. You know what I mean? Strange things. You didn't bring back Schwarber in the last offseason, so you kind of have a hole at first. You try stuff out with your younger guys. It doesn't really work. And then it's like a go get Hosmer. Go get Tommy Pham. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I can't figure out what's happening. There's a lot of questionable moves that are contradictory to what you typically are. And I don't understand why they feel like they can't compete. I don't understand why they're acting like they're not a big market team. 
I don't understand why they're not acting like it's like what happened to attracting the ball players that truly to their core love baseball. Fenway, Boston, it's a it's a baseball mecca. So what happened to using that as a part of that attraction? The low ball to Xander is such a slap in the face. To be able to then go across seas and give somebody that's never played in Major League Baseball before more money than you initially offered Xander. And this isn't like a, you can't compare the, oh, bet on yourself situation the way Xander and Judge did it. Xander's already done this. Xander's already led you guys to rings. He's already led you to him being the the core of your team. It's already in place. He has nothing more to prove. He just shows up and does his job every day. Guys like that deserve to get paid what they're worth. So the low ball never made sense. I don't understand your new GM, dude, but I I could probably bet that he's getting some letters and some probably strong-worded crossing-the-line type letters. I'm not surprised you're done. I'd be done too. I don't know how that place is. I don't. I don't see the the, you know, any type of sellout streak happening in Fenway anytime soon. Your counter move is to go bring in a corner outfielder that is, what five eight, 170 pounds. Seems awfully familiar. Mookie Verdugo Benintendi, and a guy that is coming from a market that hasn't always been able to translate so well to Major League Baseball. Pitchers do a good job of coming over. Hitters are a little bit more of a question mark. There's a lot of confusing, confusing moves, and they're putting money towards places that aren't holes in my mind. First base is still a hole. You had a chance to go get Jose Abreu, and you didn't. Now what? I'm I'm lost. I'm getting so sick and tired. Also, of- the Christian Vasquez stuff, right? And the in the Ploiecki trade. What do we? Like, I don't understand who's in control here. There's got to be such a massive disconnect between the front office and the, and the clubhouse. And I said that in season. I'm saying it again, and I'm saying it's probably going to lead into next year as well. It's where the fans are now going to get into that area where they're brown bagging it and they're acting like Reds fans. They're acting like former Cleveland fans. Fans are just fed up with the front office, fed up with the organization. They'll still root for their guys. They'll still root for their players. But what's it going to lead to? I'm just sick and tired of hearing about how the Boston Red Sox were, they were close. They were in on some guy. They were runners up in the yeah. financial race to snag such and such a name. Like, yeah. sack up and be the Boston Red Sox for once. Like, sure, four rings this millennium. Great. The I was thinking about it this morning. I'm almost thinking that those teams that won those World Series did it in spite of ownership. And that ta- that may not be a new take. There may be people out there saying that already. The ownership, yes, under their watch, they've had success. But I'm starting to think it's because of the guys almost exclusively out on the field, not not so much of what they have done putting mm-hmm. pen to paper. Because they continue to do nothing but protect their financial interests, worry about other sports teams, looking out for other teams to buy, raising ticket prices at Fenway and continuing to put out a lackluster product on the field under the guise of saying, well, we're, we're the Boston Red Sox. We're always going to be competitive. You finished in last place two of the last three years. So what are we really talking about here? Like, yeah, thanks for the, thanks for the, the, the titles, but this has been pathetic. This has been Zero fun to watch as a Red Sox fan, really a baseball fan. If you're if yeah, you're trying yeah. to if you're a new fan to the sport and you're going, yeah. oh, I've I've heard about the Red Sox before. Let me tune in, and that's what you're seeing. You're looking yeah. for another team. 
maybe even a new sport altogether. Because if that's what you're seeing, if that's your first impression of baseball, you're probably looking for something else to to fill your time because that's not baseball. Yeah. And it's a, it's the same way too. It's just like, you, you know, that baseball is better when the Yankees are acting like the Yankees. It's the same thing for the Red Sox. Baseball is better when the Yankees and Red Sox are even, right? When that rivalry is thriving and there's hate and anger amongst those players and it's because they're so competitive. This ain't it. This ain't it. I don't know what to do with my with my Xander jersey now. Like I thought for sure I'd have like another I I tell you what, I I was convinced and people can laugh at me all they want. I was convinced that there was going to be some sort of ceremony that I'd be able to to go to. La- again, laugh at me all you want, whether it be Hall of Fame, whether whether it be Red Sox Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. I was prepared because that's my guy. That's mm-hmm. my captain and I was ready to go. Whether it was six, seven year, six, seven, eight year down the road, like whatever, I was ready to go. Now, throw throw it out the window. I don't know what to do with my Xander jersey now. Like, what do I do? I really don't. I thought for sure this guy was going to be a, a Red Sox for life, and here we are. Props to the Padres, man. People saying throwing throwing stupid money around. Clearly they don't care. Clearly yeah. they're going all in and they've they have just stacked themselves to the point where it it would be alarming if they didn't see the highest level of success that they can attain this yeah. upcoming season and the seasons to follow because they're ju- they're 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 in such a great position right now. Oh yeah. I mean even at this point I would say like they're they're in better shape than the Dodgers. Just at this point right now, barring some potential, you know, signing with the Dodgers, uh, they got to get a shortstop. I think all eyes are on Dansby now. And it's like, I know we talked about how Dansby in L.A. doesn't really make sense, but like Freddie being there could probably help that transition a little bit. That I think that's the only thing that makes sense. I predicted Carlos Correa, but all these reports coming out now of just like, you know, fans just being so against Correa, understandably so. That's Understandably what I said. so. He's one of the hated, most hated players. Absolutely. Of all time, I think. Not just current. Like, of all time, he's going to go down as one of the most hated players ever. And I, was, I saw some garbage takes about that where people were saying, why as an organization would you let fan opinion dictate your moves as a front office? If they you sign one of the most hated... Exactly. If you sign one of the most hated players in baseball... Oh, and... Let's let's not forget 2017. Yeah, that, that's that's a small piece of it. Do you think you're gonna have fans showing up with Correa jerseys on? What are we no. talking about here? Yeah, like of no. course you have to have some sort of finger on the pulse of your fan base. That's such an idiotic take. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I I feel like I'm just being so like black and white, so absolute this episode. But I've just seen so many stupid takes the last 48 hours of people <laughs> saying just the dumbest things where it's like, I love it. <laughs> well, the car, the Dodgers should just go out and get Correa because he's the best available. No, you have to you have to take that into account. Yeah. You have to yeah. take the impact of that move into account with your or, with your fan base. That's it's true. Stupid. It's true. But going back to the Padres, I mean, look, as of right now, they're they're 100 percent on paper, I think, better than than the Dodgers. Um, I'm, I don't really know what the Tati situation is. I don't know. I, it kind of seems like left field makes the most sense. I'm not quite sure on that. I'm not, seen, I'm not sold on the fact that they want to keep him around. If we're being completely true. honest. I know. I know it's, uh, that would be interesting to see him move. I wouldn't mind it. It'd be kind of sweet. But uh, as of right now, I think any of those projected lineups that have like, you know, Tatis and right, Soto and left, any of that stuff works, I guess. Just seems kind of odd. The infield is set, obviously. Manny, Xander, Hassan Kim at, at second, and then uh, and then Cronenworth at first, potentially. So this move kind of just like, I, I see what the Padres were doing. Because it's like, we either go get a first baseman to plug this hole, 
but the top two first basemen are off the off the board in Rizzo and Abreu. We talked about those two guys being a perfect fit there, and they just they couldn't get done. I don't know what those offers were like. So their heads turned to okay, well, why don't we just make Cronenworth an everyday first baseman? Just work that out. Which isn't that much of a drop off when you consider Josh Bell's performance for you at first. Oh, at, yeah, that was, as as a piece miserable. there. It just wasn't was his. It just wasn't his scene. So having yeah. having Cronenworth there, it's it's fine. Yeah, and he's. It's not like he's never played first base before. He's been there before, and and it and it makes sense. So I I like it. It, it uh, it's gonna be wild, man. It's gonna be wild. But good for the Padres, and I, I'm sure the what you said it settled on 275. I know initial reports. That's what I right? saw the follow up being is 275. So over 11 years, was that like 25? Bingo, 25. Look at that. Nate knows math. Uh, yeah, 25 a year is very affordable for an aging shortstop that'll probably slide over to a new position towards the end of that contract. It's also a very and, tradable contract. When we talk about inflation of these yes, contracts here. Just like we talked about with Trey Turner years. last episode. Yeah. Like you were like, saying. The, we're going to have... And I'm so sick of like the narrative of like... Even Judge's contract, like, what? Like, wow. And then everyone's like, yeah, Soto and Otani next year pushing 500 mil. And it's like, this is how it works. I'm not, I don't really care about, like, the size of the contracts anymore just because it's eventually going to get beat next year or the year after. So I'm not, I don't really care. So this was a smart deal. And it does provide a little bit of a PR safety net with Tatis. I like what the Padres are doing. I'm just curious to see if if everything can kind of work together. It's a lot of stars on one team. So does everything run through Manny? It's kind of how like the leadership seemed in my mind. You know, he's that I guy. Think, I think because he's been there, yeah. But I think in terms of the the level of leadership that they bring, and we've said it before, Manny is Manny. For as far as we can tell, Manny's cleaned up his act out there. He's, he's grown he's, up. He's kind of the, he's the grown up out there now, and mm-hmm. we saw it with Tatis and his shenanigans and Manny bringing him in. Oftentimes, getting a little heated in that dugout. Manny's grown up out there. So I also, think once, how how much of a help is it for for the Xander argument of of the you know average to below average defense? Just having a platinum gold glove guy next to you. Being able to soak up some of that range, you know? I hate how good I think that duo is over there now. Yeah. Like I hate I hate that it's come to that. Yeah. I like there, the, there's so many there's so many factors there. The fact that I I I've come to like Machado has grown on me. Mm. And the fact that <laughs> he's he's now paired up with the guy that I thought was gonna be a Red Sox for life. And now I have to watch them play together Dude. on the same side of the infield. Plus, like the right left, if you think about the right left, just alternating the, the one through five. So a healthy lineup, you got Tatis leading off right handed, Soto hitting two lefty, Machado three. And then you can kind of play with like Xander or Cronenworth at that four five spot. Man, man. I don't think they're done either. I mean, they're throwing money around like like crazy. Like crazy. The offers that went out to Trey Turner and Judge were like no joke money. I don't think they're done. I know that majority of the big names are off the board at this point. I saw but like, uh, damn. I don't know who put the tweet out, but I saw some some post out there yesterday where it was talking about, which I hadn't really considered, but uh, the the author of the tweet uh, said that the basically the the Cohen effect is real, like mm-hmm. whether you love it or hate it, whether you like him as it's as forcing an owner or not, other organizations to to get in, right? And it said, look at what look at how he's changed baseball in just the mm-hmm. last year alone. Mm-hmm. Like these mm-hmm. teams, I we told you if you ever doubted, we told you that these teams that were playing poor weren't mm-hmm. actually poor. No, they were they were pulling wool over your eyes. They they 
they were never poor. They were never hurting for money. Did you they see that had tweet? The money. You see that tweet that's been going around? That's like, where did all this money come from for the Padres? Like, this is ridiculous. It's like, bro, it's always been there. They've always had that. It's San Diego. What do you? <laughs> they got money, dude. They know what they're doing. And I've seen I've seen the term small market thrown in front of the Padres on a lot of these tweets. Uh, I'm like, what no. are we talking about? No. What are we talking about? The just so many, so many unreasonable takes flying around out there. I I can't, yeah. dude. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Xander, I love you, man. Z- absolutely zero hard feelings. Go get your bag. You deserve it. You're you're gonna be a a star wherever you go, whether it's with San Diego or you end up on some other team halfway down the road. You're gonna be a star. You're gonna be a leader. You're gonna be a captain. I don't I don't fault you one bit for not for not taking the Boston's offer, whatever it ended up being. Like you got you reportedly got reportedly under two hundred, correct? Well, it's no, it's de- it was definitely under two hundred. They mm-hmm. the last offer that I think was out there was six one sixty two. And they said that that was the last reported. They said it's possible that maybe they they bumped it up a little closer to crunch time. But Still under two. Under two. And that is that is absolutely insulting. So, Xander, love you, man. Go go get what's yours. Uh, let's look at um, Wilson Contreras, a guy that I, I threw out there. Great. Great pick, but that's you, solid prediction, buddy. You were you were on the fence about it, but I said no. I love like, it. I'm telling you, dude. This organization they they they've seen him on more than one occasion. They know yeah. what they're getting in this guy. They're gonna they're gonna love him. I'm telling you, the whole Cardinal Cubs thing to me just doesn't really apply here. I'm like Wilson Contreras just seems sure. like a guy where wherever he goes, he's gonna be he's gonna be loved. He's gonna love that fan base. They're gonna love him. And I, I, I think it's a, it was the, to me, it was the most obvious fix for, mm-hmm. for the, for the Yachty void. And they went out and got him five years, 87 and a half million dollar deal on a, on a budget, bro. Like, is that, was that not a steal? Yeah. I feel it, like other teams looking at that deal were like, that's all it took. Yeah. <laughs> One of I, the top catchers in the league. Uh, For how much? You said five years, 87? 87 and a half. I don't even make it 20 million a year. What? How are more te- How did this not get over 100, first of all? I don't understand that. Dude, hammers left-handed pitching. So strange. Is he... Uh, where is he? Is he Venezuelan? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Man, I love that fit, man. That's cool. Something about like just a spicy Latin catcher that just makes sense in Cardinal Red. I wonder why. <laughs> Dude's a stud, man. You've seen it a good... time or two. They're they're um I'm a little nervous about how many righties they have in that lineup, though. That's a lot of righty. Arnado, Goldie, you, you want a Tyler hot take? O'Neal, Wilson Gutierrez. You want a hot take? You don't care about the righty lefty stuff. I've never cared about that. Uh, people I think you people need make it. such a big sure, but like to prioritize that to the point where you would pass up on a guy. No, I mean, I'm not, not saying not pass in this situation because yeah. you, you, yeah. there aren't lefty catchers. But you see what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. not to like if there's a piece that you can go after that you can afford and that would mm-hmm. fit well for sure with your roster construction. I'm not yeah. passing up on that guy no, no, no. if that guy is willing to come here just I because agree. he's a lefty righty whatever. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know you got like uh do, 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 Tommy Edmond. You got uh was it Newt Bar? You got uh Gorman, and then you got Donovan, right? Oh, all those guys swing at lefty, so there's uh, some options there. Yeah, but you're talking about like you know just some interesting. Interesting. I, I'd like a little bit more pop in the middle. Just one one lefty that would make sense there. I don't know. Nimmo? Yeah. Hopefully 
Ooh. Hopefully Edmund can can flip it around. I know he was struggling there for a stretch last year or this past season, but oh, he'll be fine. Yeah, I like he'll, him. He'll be fine. I'm on Nimmo in center for them. I know I said pop, but like still, I like that. If they get him, I, I I can probably go ahead and make a prediction right now. The team that will be reported coming in second place for for Nimmo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Or really any free agent that has yet to be signed. Um, now, love that move for the Cardinals. I, like I mentioned, I said it right after the season ended. I, it, that that move just made sense to me, and I'm glad to see it It went through. Uh, a guy we, we already touched on a little bit, Josh Bell, two-year, $33 million deal with the Guardians. Uh as we mentioned, San Diego was just not the place for him. And that's fine. Like, it was a great, to me, it was a great acquisition at the time. I'm like, this, this team just got so much better, obviously, with the Soto edition in conjunction with that. But I'm just like, there, there's no way this this move ends up poorly by the end of the year. Didn't end yeah. up great, but that's baseball. And for him, I think, to get a change of scenery, go to a... a a a true smaller market team, not the Padres, as yeah, as people yeah. claim that is. Uh, I think it'll be good for him. It seems like the most comfort, right? That's like his. That's his been his career. Pittsburgh, success Washington, in Pittsburgh, like, in DC. It's like a little under the radar. Let me just show up to the ballpark, do my job. That oozes Cleveland Guardians baseball. They needed somebody at first for sure. They were really bad offensively at first base. And as much as Josh Naylor acted like he was one of the best hitters in the league, he was not. So they needed somebody to fill that that spot. Um, I just, I, I don't know, something about a switch hitting first baseman that gets me fired up. I like it. A guy can hit with the best of him when he's on. I, I know that much. Um. Just going through the list here, Taiwan Walker, four year, seventy two million dollar deal with the Phillies. Love this move. David Dombrowski. <laughs> say what you again, I'll say it again. Say what you want about David Dombrowski and how he empties a farm system or empties your pockets, but he goes out there and gives it. you a chance. Yeah. I'd rather have people out there saying that like, why would you want David Dombrowski back if you're the Red Sox? Not to make this about the Red Sox mm -hmm. but are you kidding me is this more enjoyable is it is, is what's going on right now with Boston is this is this fun is it fun being able to read about the prospects on online and and watch your your hometown talent walk out the door is this fun is this better than mm -hmm. what David Dombrowski's doing no how much was that deal for Tywin Walker uh four years 72 million dollars was that 16 a year? Something like that? 17? No, that's, that's uh, it's like 17? 18. 18. Um, uh, but yeah, this is this, this not this bad. Came, it's pretty good for four or five rotation yeah, back guy. In, back in yeah. rotation guy. Um, or, I mean, you, you saw him get kind of creative with the bullpen. Zach Eflin kind of slid into that closer role. Who's to say Taiwan doesn't eventually do that? Who knows? Yeah, this came um I think the thing that got me for this move is it came so shortly after signing Trey Turner. It was just it seemed like one after the other, one after the other and it was just like that they're spending they're spending money. Mm -hmm. There are a few teams over the course of the winter meetings we saw that were just willing to throw money out there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. You yeah. have to do it. You can't worry about these these. It's never going to be worth it at the end. No. Every single time. All these deals are going to be rough. It's a lottery ticket. You have to pay for lottery tickets. That's what these teams are doing. And the lottery is winning the World Series. The Phillies are right there. They were just right there. They're re-upping. I like what they're doing. And I'm pretty sure it was uh, J.P. Morosi talking on MLB Network today. He, he was saying... And I, it makes so much sense. I don't understand why people can't wrap their heads around this. He said, there are teams out there. He said, 
for these these big name stars moving forward, and I was talking with somebody about this in the DMs, for these big name stars moving forward, if you're not willing to pay premium, you're going to finish second, third, fourth, fifth, every single time. And yeah. he said, what we've seen the last few days with these winter meetings is that there are teams out there, there are ownership groups that aren't willing to spend that money. And yeah. I kid you not, I'm walking away from, from the TV. And as I hear him say that, where he says some teams just aren't willing to spend that premium. I, there's nobody else in the house. I literally shouted, then why do you, why own a baseball team? Right. If you're not willing to invest in your product, if you're not willing to make it better, if you're not willing to compete with the rest of these owners who also have egos, probably like yourself as a baseball owner, why would you not want to make it the best you can possibly make it? Why yeah. would you opt to go for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth best offer just to say that you threw your towel in there, you, you, you threw your hat in the ring? Yeah, just to make your then, fans happy. And then call it a day without yeah. anything to show for it. Why would you want to own a baseball team? And what what was the the stat that came out like in the in the World Series? There was basically like uh, every every year for like the last four or five years, for the most part, like majority of the teams that have been in the World Series or even the Championship Series, they're all like top five in spending. Imagine so that like you have to you have to imagine that. Um. Cody Bellinger, one year, seventeen and a half million dollar deal with the Cubs. This happened, I guess, a couple days ago. Um, but like we talked about, if you're Cody Bellinger, go with a team who's not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. Reestablish yourself, find your swing again because you know it's there, mm -hmm. and bet on yourself on a one year deal. And that's exactly what he's doing. And we'll see how it pans out. I I think it was an okay move. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Because like 17 and a half doesn't break the bank. You have plenty of room payroll-wise. And if he ends up even getting close to what he was, <laughs> you got a stud for $17 million. So I like it. I'm a fan. Uh... Let's see who else we got here. Mitch Hanniger, three years. Well, they got the Cubs. Cubs got Tyone, right? Oh yeah, Jameson Tyone, four years, sixty-eight million dollar deal with the Cubs. Uh, finished last and, year with a three-nine-one. And they're rumored to be on in on on Dansby. Yeah, I think they're trying. I think yeah. they're trying. You know, I, I I had that very thought this morning. I'm like, we've been we've been railing the Cubs for the last however long, but they're at least. And they're they're not they're not superstar signings by any stretch. No, they're not getting guys like Xander or but they don't Correa. need to because they they're not ready for those guys yet. No, but they're at least they're at least putting the effort in, and that's mm -hmm. literally all I've said. That that's been the entire point of what I've said is just put the effort in. Yeah. If you if you sign a big name, if you sign a Dansby, and it doesn't pan out. That's not necessarily on you as a front office. Yeah. That's maybe more on Dansby or your or your your coaching staff. But at least you're putting your team in a position to at least try to go out there and compete. Yeah. Some teams only, can't say the same. The only thing is that I just I still don't know why they didn't move Wilson Contreras last year. You knew he was gone. Yeah, that why was a weird him? that was a weird ending to that whole story. Like strange. Him and Hap crying in the dugout. He was like, good why, as gone. I don't know. Why didn't you move him? Get pieces for that. I wouldn't mind Dansby there. If they can get it done. As far as Tyone goes, I feel like it was a little bit of an overpay. Would we say four years, sixty eight? Mm hmm A little bit of an overpay. In reality, Tyone is a is a four or five guy. Yeah. He's a Taiwan Walker guy. Um, but Obviously, just a, a, I'm happy for him. He's had a really rough, rough road between cancer and TJ. And it's just like good for him to get his bag. He deserves it. He had a really good season last year. But uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, as a Yankees fan that they didn't spend that amount of, of money yeah, on him. I agree. Um, that was smart but, on their part. 
Yeah, but good good for the good for the Cubs. Um just limit your expectations a little bit. He's not a one or two guy. He'll he'll have a solid year. Um he'll eat innings, hopefully stay healthy, but he's a middle of the rotation kind of guy. Yeah, and his ability to to keep guys off the bases via the walk, he he allowed one point six one per nine last season, uh tied for fourth fewest in the American League. So Yeah. He's not going to go out there, like you said, he's not going to go out there and be a one or two, but he'll he'll give he's you a game a, manager and he'll give you yeah, a chance. He'll give you yeah. some innings. He'll give you a little bit of consistency there towards the back yeah. end. I think it's a good pickup for the Cubs. Um, going back to the list here, Mitch Hanniger, three-year, $43.5 million deal. This was a deal made by the Giants <laughs> as they were still in the hunt for Aaron Judge. It's kind of weird, right? It was, yeah. It, honestly, my my honest thought when that when I saw that notification come through, as I said, okay, the Giants are just ready to kind of what the Padres did, where they're just throwing fu money around, and I'm like, okay, they're they're gonna sign Hanniger, and then they're gonna follow it up probably within the next 24 hours with the Judge news. And John Heyman almost completed that story for us, yeah. but uh, was a little misleading. Um, still an odd move. How much was it for? Three years, forty three and a half mil. I saw the tweet that somebody was somebody said like um good for the Giants for giving giving that lineup a 30 and 100 guy to support a potential judge landing. I don't think Mitch Hanniger is a 30 100 guy in that ballpark. Do you? He's barely a 30 100 guy in T-Mobile. Yeah. So, and he he's got back issues. It's odd. The Giants have a lot of like older corner outfield guys too. You know, I love I love Yaz, but like Yaz and and Luis Gonzalez is younger, but like still a corner guy. Slater. Now Hanniger. It's like, do you have a center fielder or what's going on here? I don't know. Again, the Giants just that that they, they, they weren't gonna get Judge. Nice try. You, you just you don't have what it takes right now. You need a lot more. And signing post thirty year old free agents to play stopgap is just they're not there. They're going to be a fourth or fifth place team in, the, in that division. Uh, what was their final offer again? The Giants for Judge. It was the same, was it not? It was three eighty, three sixty, three eighty. Didn't they go above? 360? No. No, I thought they went 360 the and then same. the Yankees matched it. And that I it think that's all Judge same. was looking for. I think. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I read. There was, a, like I said, a lot of reports flying around. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what either. The, what the final situation was. But, I mean, those those offers were made very, very public. So, credit to the Giants for, you know, kind of backing up their talk, saying we're not going to – if. if that was in fact the case. They weren't going to be outbid if they met if they met the Yankees at three sixty. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what more can you do? That I think yeah. at that point that just comes down more to preference. But yeah, and it just showed that like the the with the giant or the uh, Padres coming in at ten for four hundred for him, and him still saying no. It just shows that like he he wanted to be a Yankee. It, it wasn't it wasn't so much about you know that's another forty million dollars. It's like. The Giants could have done that, but I don't think that would have helped. I, I mean, you would know better because you're probably more in, in tune with that stuff, but I I had never thought for a second that the Padres were really a consideration for I, Judge. That, no. E- even if they did offer more than the Giants and the Giants were technically outbid, I didn't really think of that in that way. Yeah. I'm just thinking it, you're re- you're and, going up against the Yankees and nobody else if you're the and Giants. I'd put I'd put money on it. I'd put money on it that Judge's camp was the one that that leaked that oh, without Padres a offer without a just to say, oh, okay, you did take a hometown discount, just to save face. It, see, I'm telling you, it's textbook. If if any agent <laughs> is looking at how to treat a superstar and how to go this with these negotiations this year, judges camp nailed it. Job well done. Textbook. Uh, Kenley Jansen, Masataka Yoshida, uh, both. Signing with the Red Sox, we already mentioned Yoshida a little bit. 
Um, Kenley Jansen, two-year, 32 mil, led the NL with 41 saves last year. There was a lot of conversation, a lot of talk around him being washed. Say what you will, he put up 41 saves. Um, I'm going to say that that plays in a bullpen that finished basically at the bottom in all of baseball last year. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about Walsh all you want. Anything at this point is an upgrade for the Red Sox. So plus righty cutter plays away from the from the monster. So I like the fit. Like the fit as well. Yoshida, like we talked about. We you you never know with these guys. You never know if it translates. You never know what you're gonna get until they get over here. You can you can look at numbers, you can look at tape from from overseas all you want, but you're ne- you're not gonna know how it plays how it converts to this style of play until it happens and i mean time will tell there's a lot of a lot of people were hitting me up saying man you guys got this guy on on a bargain this and that and i'm like i it's it's hard for me to assign bargain or not when you just don't know like if if this guy had five six seven years under his belt here and he was putting up great numbers, and we we get a guy like that at that rate. It's like, okay, yeah, bargain. So be it's it. Just, we don't you just, know. You just don't know. You just don't know what that value looks like. It's two names that have come from Japan that can, you know, I, I guess you can now toss in Otani. So three with with guys that have really done it. And it's Ichiro, Hideki Matsui, Otani. Like that's that's it. Like it, it's it's difficult. It's a different game in a way and pitchers attack you differently i think analytics are stepped up over here compared to over there so it's like they know how to attack you i'm just i'm not saying it's a flop not saying he's gonna fail i'm just saying it's it's a lot of money to commit to somebody that you really just don't know about especially in the position that you're in as an organization odd move um Jose Quintana, two year, twenty six million dollar deal with the Mets. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, no, he had a good year last year. A lot of upside there. I, yeah. I think a lot of upside. He had a bounce back year last year, so good for him. What was the deal? Two twenty six. It's pretty good. Again, back end of the rotation guy. You lost Tywin Walker, so someone's got to fill that slot. Bassett is still out there though. Yeah. Are they trying to get him back? I don't even know. I don't know about Mets fans anymore. I'm confused about. You want my honest thought? Yeah. The Red Sox are going to go get Bassett and then try to make him like our savior or number one. He's going to, they're going to roll him out there as though he's going to be the fix for this team. And we're going to finish in fifth place. In I did predict, I did predict Bassett to go there. Uh, but no, good for Quintana. You know, there, like I said, there's some upside there. Uh, he was phenomenal for the Cardinals. Uh, posted a 201 with them and allowed just one home run over 62 and two thirds. Um, also had the lowest home run rate in the NL last year and had a near, had nearly a three to one strikeout to walk ratio. So there's potential there, but like people reminded me when the, when the Verlander news broke about him going to the Mets Say and we put out that clip of us talking about Verlander not being your average forty year old. There were mm-hmm. people in the comments who were swift to remind us that at the end of the day, it's still the Mets. And I'm saying, <laughs> I'm sitting there going, you know what? I've been preaching that this whole it's last year. I can't, I can't just all of a sudden ignore that, even though it's Verlander. Yeah. And that if that's how I'm going to approach the Verlander situation, I'm surely not going to sit here and say, well, no, Quintana's immune to that because mm-hmm. Quintana's not Verlander. So. Time will tell, but on paper at least, and I, I know baseball is not played on paper, it looks like a, a not half bad acquisition for them. So uh lastly I concur. Lastly, here I got Andrew Heaney, two year, twenty five mil deal with the Rangers. Another, in my opinion, love it. Yeah, another high upside. He was at least for the stretch that I had him in fantasy, was uh phenomenal. He he got me he got me a few dubs. 
over over that stretch. Let's um, go Rangers. What's that rotation looking like now? So Degrom, John Gray. I think Gray is number three. You got Martin Perez. Two, Martin Perez, sorry, two. John, John Gray, Gray three. three. Who's the fourth guy? Who's the fourth guy? Come on, we know that. We know this. No, would he would Heaney not be three? Or you think John John Gray think, would be? I think Heaney's like four or five. Yeah, Heaney, yeah, you're right. Heaney be probably four. John Gray three. Oh, I saw like a graphic of the picture and I was of like their rotation. I was like, I'm I'm kind of a fan. I don't hate it. Just don't know where it went. Oh, it's gonna bug me. Odorizzi. Odorizzi at five. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heaney yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. Heaney four. So like it's it's a lot of vets know know how to get it done. And it's and it's pitchers that'll always give you a chance. And it's an offense that's on the up and up. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. A um, couple non-free agency topics here to, to wrap us up. Uh, there was reports came out right in the middle of winter meetings that uh, indicated that Major League Baseball potentially used three different types of baseballs this past season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a little snippet from the report here, so if you haven't read it, I'll save you the time. I'll uh, just give you a better idea of what they found because, as you would expect, didn't really get any coverage from the media. Didn't really get any coverage from the writers, the reporters. Smack what dab you. in the middle of free agent signings. Just real convenient in the <laughs> in terms of timing. Uh, so it says, despite Commissioner Rob Manfred insisting that one baseball would be used during the 2022 MLB season, there is evidence that three different baseballs were utilized, according to Bradford William Davis of Insider. That conclusion comes courtesy of Dr. Meredith Wills, an astrophysicist who had conducted various studies of MLB balls the past couple of years. Dr. Willis managed to collect a sample of 204 baseballs from the 2022 MLB season and determined that three types of baseballs were used in the games. The dead ball Major League Baseball promised it would use, the, quote, juiced baseballs that were used in previous seasons, and a third ball that split the difference. Dr. Wills dubbed the third ball the Goldilocks ball, given that its measurements were between those of the juice ball and the dead ball. The overwhelming majority of balls tested by Dr. Wills from 2022 wound up being the dead ball, which Manfred promised would be the sole ball used last season. The Goldilocks balls, which are more lively than dead balls, were found mostly in special instances such as the postseason, the World Series, all-star events, and when the league used commemorative stamps on the ball. Dr. Wills Told did find ya. Dr. Wills did find other instances of the Goldilocks ball being used in the regular season, and all of them occur- occurred during New York Yankee games. These balls reportedly did not contain commemorative stamps, per Davis. Lastly here, the, this conclusion comes after slugger Aaron Judge hit an American League record 62 home runs in the 2022 MLB regular season. The league consistently prom- promoted Judge's chase of the record, cutting into his at-bats to ensure that fans could watch him try to make history. Judge signed a nine-year, $360 million deal to stay with the Yankees on Wednesday. I already knew this. We already knew this. I put out the tweet when I saw this report. I said... It, the the tweet was reporter or uh, astrophysicist finds that three different types of balls were used and I quote tweeted and I said the dead balls the juice balls and whatever Pujols was hitting last year mm-hmm. and <laughs> you you all thought we were crazy you all thought we were crazy you said there's no way Ryan Ripkin where you at Ryan. He said, "No, that's nonsense." No, he'll, be, <laughs> he'll be he'll be getting his opinion in here soon. Um, yeah, it's not nonsense. And, and Major League Baseball owns Rawlings. They own Rawlings, which does Rawlings not get, is the official baseball. The manufacturing does not get, does not get talked up about it. No, that's such a that's such a scam. That's such a scam. Obviously, there was there, there's other baseballs being used. It sounds like the Goldilocks baseball is like the the prime baseball. It's like the the one we should settle on. Why aren't we using that? If it's perfectly in the middle between dead ball and the juiced balls, it's like, why isn't that used all the time? So it 
I'm not surprised, dude. I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say. You guys thought we we're crazy. You on on a lot of things. The the listeners think we're a little out there on some things, but it's funny how it always comes back to things like this, where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? There was there was a little bit of truth to that. Mm-hmm. Y'all think it's a bit. You think we're just out here throwing takes and seeing what sticks? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I want I want to see Ryan backpedal when we get him on. I want to see oh, him yeah. backpedal. See we, what he says. We need to get it. We need to make I'm a coming note at him to, to bring that up. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, here. The MLB lottery draft. What are you are you kidding me? Or the draft lottery, whatever. Are you kidding me? I texted you. It, call me a bad baseball fan if you want, but I'd like to think compared to the average Joe that I'm pretty in tune with like what's going on in baseball. Like I, mm-hmm. I've got all my notifications linked up. Uh like I I'm in good shape. I'm I'm checking my phone constantly, like all times of the day. And I did not see really any promotion of this whatsoever. At and I, all. And I know that that's that I'm not crazy in saying that because I saw uh I, I read a piece where they interviewed Mike Rizzo of the mm-hmm. Nats, and he was just like, yeah, it was like kind of he's basically just like yeah, it was kind of uncomfortable. I didn't really know like what to think. It was kind of awkward. Like I, I was nervous. I was like anxious going into it, a little nervous, and I'm like. The whole thing was just weird. Yeah, I it's, saw. I, I saw I a piece that said that there was just the like draft a draft last year too. Yeah, like yeah. they did a good job with the draft last year. Like they created an event around it, and it's just to hide this is strange. To put it in the middle of winter meetings is weird. And again, yeah. it's just like you know that all attention is going to go to these free agent signings. So uh, I, I feel like if they change the date, if they change the hype a little bit. Maybe do it like at the very end of the draft. Release next year's. You know what I'm saying? Like allow a little bit of hype around it. It's just this was just uh, another dropped promotion worthy event. Well, I mean, for I, I get it though. Like you can't do it in the middle of the year because you have to see how the how the year pans out and all that. All right, that's fair. But so like I understand it from that point of view, but. To drop it into the middle of winter meetings when you you just know everything that's at stake in terms of this money and these names. Yeah, like, beginning why? of just, winter meetings, that's cool. Like if it's like a little stagnant, deals aren't happening, lead it off with that. Get the if ball. If it's like the night that. before that the that the winter meetings begin, kind of get yes. the ball rolling a little bit. It, I think this I'm, just made no I sense think I'm saying this because I want to go to the winter meetings next year. Do you want to go? Let's go. I'm, yeah, I'm down. Let's go yell at GMs. What are you doing? Spend money. No, just kidding. We're going to meet some cool people. We're going to do it. I want to do it. Where is it? Do you know? No, that's what I was asking you. That does it change every year? Is it not in San Diego every year? Does it does it revolve? I feel like I should know this. Twenty twenty three. Since you took the intro, I'm taking this. Founded by former left-handed pitcher Rob Nelson, Big League Chew started from humble beginnings in the Portland Mavericks bullpen in 1977. For more than 40 years, the iconic pouches packed with shredded, flavorful bubble gum has become the number one shredded gum of athletes everywhere. Big League Chew has sold more than 900 million pouches and is designated as the Hall of Fame bubble gum. Grab some gum and head to Big League Chew's social media channels at Big League Chew on Twitter and at Big League Chew gum on instagram to show off your big league chew bubbles you can also find a list of retailers or purchase any other products directly from their website at bigleaguechew.com blc any update on uh winter meetings 2023 i'm gonna show if we do go i'm gonna show up i'm gonna show up like rob Lowe with the just the mlb hat because i'm i'm not I'm not. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I'm not going in in socks like gear. The, like the umpire hat. You will not find me in socks gear. It's in San Diego again. Let's go. Fly here. We'll drive together. I could. I. I could. I could be down for that. Anyway, that's that's all I really had. No draft today because this was kind of a an emergency pod. I. I. 
I truly feel better. Like I, I really need this. I wasn't joking when I said that this was not a bit. Like I really needed this little therapy session. I really need this because there's nobody else I can talk to. Like I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna call call Meredith while she's at work and and give you, you that have. vent that vent session that I gave you on here for those mm-hmm. couple minutes. I'm not gonna call her and do that because well that's just you just don't do that. Mm-hmm. And I can't. I mean the the group chats can only you can only vent so much. But I needed to get on here with somebody who understood where I was coming from. They understood the pain I was dealing with and that they wouldn't give me a hard time about it, which I appreciate from from your perspective. They're not giving me a hard time about it. Maybe after the dust settles a little bit. But like I said, this wasn't this wasn't good for this wasn't good for baseball. This wasn't good for the rivalry. So I don't know how I think much attacking of a hard time you, you can really the, give me. Uh, attacking you in the offseason is just kind of it's it's anticlimactic anyway. It's kind of so. lame. Yeah, so next season I'll remind you how bad you guys are, but we'll just wait for that. So, cool. Good stuff. That's, uh, that's about all I really got. Yeah. We'll uh, see you guys again Monday. I w- yeah, I w- we'll be back imagine. Monday. I think. I mean, I'm sure there's a few more deals to trickle in. There's still some big names out there, obviously, so I'm excited to see where stuff happens. I have a feeling Dansby is the next one to go. What do you think? You like that? Yeah, I think Dansby goes, and that'll that'll just all but solidify Correa's market. Like the, yeah. you'll be able to pinpoint what he's pulling in at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Uh, but either way, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk deals, and uh, maybe just take a little deep dive into some stuff if uh, if deals don't happen. We're and again, here. it's it's possible that uh, as always, uh, something could be happening seconds within within us uh, ending this. Call. Oh yeah, so, very true. Just plan Very on true. that being the case, and uh, give us give us a little bit of grace here, because there's going to be a little bit of a buffer period. But just to know that if if it would have happened, we would have talked about it. But as of right now, that's pretty much all we got. Got to do what you got to do. Don't go chasing curveballs. We love you all, and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.